Hey everybody, good morning and happy Tuesday. Hope this finds you well. Let's dig into Hebrews today as we've been going through this book for a few weeks now. We find ourselves near the end of chapter 11 and there's only 13 chapters so we're getting close but we've got some very cool truth to unearth today from the book of Hebrews. So we're going to start at verse 23 in chapter 11 and we'll go through verse 30. So we'll wait for a few people to join. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Let us know. I'm going to read this and we'll talk. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. Okay, love this passage. So many great examples of faith that builds chronologically, okay? So, if we start in verse 23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. So Moses' mom starts with is a hero and his father too. But Jochebed hid Moses somehow. I don't know how you hide an infant for three months with all the noises that an infant makes. Um, but she did. And Eventually, he reached an age where they could not hide him anymore because the Egyptians were killing Hebrew baby boys. So, she floated him down the river, and in faith, she knew that, or she trusted that God would provide for him, and indeed, he did. So, she's moved by the Spirit to, to do this, and she... She does it in faith. She trusts, okay? And look what faith does because Moses did incredible things. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called son of the Pharaoh's daughter. Okay, so Moses identified with his people, his people who he was born to, the Hebrews. Choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. So Moses sees that his people are mistreated and of course he kills that Egyptian and when that happens he has to flee uh, but he chooses to come back and lead his people rather than just being okay with the way they were mistreated and living as one of the Egyptians uh, Moses is not okay with that and so by faith he trusts God verse 26 he considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt for he was looking to the reward. That's how you do it. You look to the eternal reward. Okay, if you're going to make your loyalty based on what's going on in the present and what you see, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Verse 27, By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. He endured by putting his trust in the invisible God. That's faith. That's faith. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. So, again, another example of faith, not just Moses, but the Israelites who did this. By faith, the people crossed the sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. Why is that? Well, they didn't have faith, and they were pursuing those who had faith. So God did not give them the same kind of protection that he gave his people. In verse 30, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. Uh, that took faith because walls don't crumble with trumpets, right? And drums. Walls crumble with weapons, people. But by faith, 
God did it. God did it. So we see all these examples um, of the Israelites putting their faith and trust in God and how it worked out for them. And God is, is still the same. In fact, God is the same God back then that he is today. And God doesn't see things as the world does. There was a lot of examples in there of faith where people had to look to the invisible God, not to the present, right? Not to the temptation of the present, like the wealth that surrounded Moses being part of Pharaoh's family. Instead, by faith, he looked to God and he looked to the future, okay? And God doesn't see things as the world does. You know, the world sees certain things as weak. God sees them as strong. Uh, Moses saw himself as weak as far as his speech. Well, God saw him as a strong leader and made him a strong leader. Um, The world sees small as inferior to big. Well, when it came to Israel's greatest king, God saw small as powerful because he picked David. He picked the runt of the litter, okay? And David was the greatest king that Israel ever knew. So there are two sides to this, two sides to this. The first is don't doubt what God can do in someone else's life, okay, when they have faith. Don't doubt what God can do. It's easy to write people off, especially when they mess up, okay? We do that with public figures all the time, and when they mess up, it's public. People know about it, and it's easy to say, you know, they're a fraud, right? Well, people could have said that to David after the Bathsheba incident, right? But God redeemed that, and continue to use David as a great leader of his people. Um, The second part of this is don't doubt what God can do in your life either through faith. You know, we see areas in our life where we fall short as weaknesses, but God sees them as strengths. And here's why. Uh, Those are places where God can show his power, right? The the emptiness, the, the holes that we see in ourselves, God fills those up with him and shows his strength so that people see there's no way that that person is doing this without the help of God. That's how he works, okay, time and time again. But we have to allow him to show and use his power. How do we do that? By faith. What's faith? It's it's trusting in something that you can't necessarily see. Trusting in something that is happening in the present and is happening in the future. It takes faith. It takes just trusting in God. God wants us to rely on Him. We are made to rely on Him, okay? And we have to rely on Him when we are in that incident where we have to share our faith. We always think, oh, I need to know more first, or I I really need to have all the answers before I can share my faith. Step out in faith. Uh, We have to step out in faith when you sign up for that mission trip that you're not totally comfortable with for the first time, when you sign up for that servant event, when you join a small group, when you lead a small group, God fills in the gaps when we have faith, when we trust him, and he puts people around us to fill in the gaps as well. So in the same way, you know, Jesus came in meekness and humility. People do not see that as traits of a leader, right? Born in a manger. Not the way the world pictured, not the way they pictured their Messiah to be either. And yet he accomplished the greatest work possible, defeating sin, defeating death once and for all. And so God works differently from the world. We have to remember that when we have faith. And the beauty is we can look in scripture and see that God did this all the time. He does this all the time. This is who he is. We have to trust. We have to have faith. So don't fear the world when it tells you that you're not enough or threatens things that conflict with your faith, don't get caught up in the present. Don't get caught up in what you can see. Put your faith in the invisible God who has promised he'll be with us. Put your faith in the invisible God who time and time and time and time and time and time again has shown his power through weakness in scripture, in people's lives around us. This is what God does. We put our fear, our love, and our trust in God even when you're outnumbered, even when it seems like you're not enough, and you allow him to do what only he can do. It takes the pressure off of us, and it builds our relationship with him so we can trust him more and more. So let's thank him for that. Let's pray. God, we come before you today, and we thank you 
for the way that time and time again, you display your power through weakness. Lord, you did it through your son by defeating sin and death. You've done it through Moses. You did it through David. You did it through so many, and you do it today. And Lord, we pray first that we don't doubt others who have faith and what you're doing in their lives, but also that we put our trust in what you're doing in our lives. Help us to be bold through the power of your Holy Spirit to share our faith, to step out in faith into the situations that you're calling us to, and by faith, trusting that you'll fill in the gaps. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God's blessings, everyone. Have an awesome day, and we'll see you soon.